My Papa Goes Part 2, that's what you could call this video. This project was created in the Halloween season 2023 and the ghost was a successful implementation of a pop-up ghost using a servo motor instead of pneumatics. Unfortunately, the ghost needs little repair now. You will find out why and how I repair the ghost in this video because I don't want to withhold all the weak points of the old design from you. So this will be an exciting video for all the Halloween crafters which like technical things very much. If you don't know this project yet, no problem. I'll provide the link to the video for the project itself down in the video description and at the end of this video. And with that we are ready to go. Welcome to Old School Hunter. Let's get started on repairing my pop-up ghost. Yes, here it is, our ghost, but unfortunately it's no longer working. The sound itself works, but it does not pop up anymore. And that was also the case in Halloween when the animatronic was activated. Lights and sounds were working, but no more movement. Since light and sounds are still working without issues and only the arm of the pop-up ghost is no longer moving, there must be a problem with the servo motor. In order to track down the problem, let me quickly disassemble the ghost. The essentials have been disassembled and here we have the servo motor which no longer works. Now the question arises, did I size the servo too small? To clarify this, here's a little bit of theory and because theory is always boring, I try to keep it short. The servo is specified at 40 kg, which means with a lever length of 1 cm, the servo can lift 40 kg, to put it simple. The mechanical arm of the pop-up ghost has a length of 45 cm. If you calculate that, the servo can still lift about 900 gram at the front. As I said, a rough estimate. The ghost itself weighs 300 grams, so in terms of weight, it's doable for the small servo and the ghost works without any problems. However, what I didn't take into account is the jerky movement when the pop-up ghost lifts up. Without doing scientific measurements or calculation, you surely hit the limits of the 40 kg servo. If any of you would like to do a little math here, please post the results down to the comments. In summary, just because the servo can move the pop-up ghost, it doesn't mean it will survive in the long run. So far so good. The 40 kg servo is certainly undersized for the application. But what about the repair now? First of course, I will use a larger servo motor and I've opted for the 60 kg version now. And if I do a little math again, the servo can move about 1.3 kg with the length of the lever of the pop-up ghost. That's insane 400 g more. The more powerful servos often offer the option of using such a bracket like this, which has the advantage of distributing forces during movement. A second wheel is attached to the opposite side of the drive wheel, which holds the bracket. Important note, the second wheel only holds the bracket, but it is not driven by the motor. With the new servo and the bracket, there are new possibilities of assembling the mechanical parts now, so let's take a look. The new way of assembling the pop-up mechanism is pretty cool, but it also comes with a new problem that needs to be solved. How do I attach the pop-up arm to the bracket now? The bracket is relatively narrow and there's only a single hole in the center of the bracket, so I can't simply attach the PVC pipe to the bracket now. And of course I wanted to screw the pipe onto the center of the bracket. This is also very difficult with a single hole in the center because I run into the risk of the pipe rotating sideways. So I sat down with a 3D software called Blender and designed a mount for it. An adapter between the bracket of the servo and the pipe which holds the ghost. Then I put it into Bamboo Studio, sliced it and 3D printed it using some PLA Plus which should be fine for this use case. And this is what the finished result looks like. The adapter is finished so I can put the mechanism back together. This is quite easy now because except of two holes, I have already provided all other holes in the design. First I attach the adapter plate to the bracket itself by using some screws with the size M3 for this. And because I'm not simply screwing into the PLA, of course some nuts are added to secure everything. Now the pipe is attached to the adapter. I didn't want to skimp the screws here, so I used four screws. Two horizontally and two vertically. Perhaps a little overkill, but in any case, it now seems very stable. 
And of course, I also added some nuts to tighten everything. Until now, the whole thing looks kind of amazing, didn't it? Then I attach the bracket including the pipe to the servo. To start here, I first screw the driving wheel to the motor. Then I put the support wheel on the opposite side of the motor powered wheel. And now I add the bracket to the motor by using some screws. This is a bit fiddly because the screws are very small here. What do you think about the new mechanism? Tell me your thoughts about it in the comments. Because of the changes, the way the pop-up mechanism works now, I can no longer use the old version for mounting the motor. Otherwise, the pipe would collide with the wood when the pop-up ghost lifts up here. This is because the pipe is no longer attached sideways, but it runs in the middle now. But hey, this could be fixed very simple, I have to modify the mount for the motor a little bit, so this is not a big deal. I kept the new version of the mount very simple. I used two roof battens and cut them to the length of 32cm for the vertical framing, then I used a leftover of 17cm lying around that fits quite well for the horizontal framing. This is now screwed together using some screws and attached to the base frame. And then I'll attach the motor on top using some plumber's tape like this. Well, the mechanics are back in place and I hope the ghost is working again, but I'll test it later in the video. Since I've once got the ghost on the operating table, I also wanted to perform some kind of cosmetic surgery. I want to put the entire control system in a housing because all the exposed wires are a surefire way to get the following thoughts during transportation. Hmm, the cable is disconnected. Where does it go now? So back to Blender. I have reproposed my animatronic box. I have adapted it a bit and added a few mounts for the Arduino and the large 12V step down module. I also added some mounts for the vacuum terminals to get some kind of cable management as I wanted to move the electronic parts as one large piece. Then put the model into the slicer, fire up the 3D printer again and so the box is finished and ready to be filled with life. Alright, here we have our animatronic box and I have already installed the parts for the power input. Now it's time to install all the other electronic parts and because I wanted to be lazy I'm going to unscrew everything from the board as it is and install it in the box. The goal should be to loosening as less cables as possible. Well, we'll see. Alright, let's start by removing the tape which holds everything together. Then I use the screwdriver to unscrew the electronic parts. Here the sound module, the Arduino. All these parts were hold down to the wooden board using some screws. And then I can put the parts well connected into their new housing, into the box here. Then I use some small screws to screw down the parts into the box. The box has some predefined holes where I can screw in the screws to hold the parts in place. And then I put back the vacuum terminals. And these terminals hold the connection between the Arduino and the sound module. And of course the motor management. And then recreate the power supply. And this is what the finished result looks like. I think good cable management now. And the wires are secured in the box. And with that, everything is in the box and ready connected. Now of course comes the most important part, the, the test, test run. Drama. The ultrasonic sensor which is responsible for triggering the animatronic is connected here. Normally everything stays as it was, just arranged differently, so I give you 10 seconds and you can write into the comments whether you think the ghost is working again or maybe not. <laughs> Okay, time's up, let's start the test run. Ok, 
Okay, sound is working, but the motor does not work. Hmm. Okay, I think I found the problem. Uh, maybe one of you already saw it in the video. Um, the yellow wire which controls the servo was detached from the Arduino as I removed everything and I placed it at the wrong pin at the Arduino. So I choose the right pin now. Now everything should work. And here we go. Great. So finally we are done. All what's left is to attach the animatronic box to the board using some plumber's tape. Alright guys, that concludes the repair of my pop-up ghost. To briefly summarize what was done here. First I replaced the defective servo motor with a larger new one. At the same time I also modified the mount for the pop-up arm which is much more stable now. Second I packed the entire controller by building such a stylish box for it and that puts an end to all the exposed cables between the Arduino, the soundboard and the step-down module. I think their repair and the upgrade was worthwhile and I hope the pop-up goals will serve me well in the future. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you might have changed during this little upgrade session. I put the link for the video of the original project down to the description of this video. And that brings us to the end. If you liked this little upgrade video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel to support me so I can create more of such cool videos like the pop-up goals just for you and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the new videos. For today I say thanks for watching, see you next time and happy Halloween!